Today I'm going to show you how to work with colors in Procreate on the iPad. I will show you how to navigate the different color options, how to pick colors from the palettes, how to use the color harmonies in Procreate, and how to structure your layers in the most practical way that gives you the most flexibility to experiment with different colors. I'm Tatiana Dennis. I'm here to teach you how to draw using the cute and simple style called kawaii, and how to start a creative business using your newfound skill. So if you ever wanted to start with print on demand, or maybe you draw with your kids and you wanna get better at it, well, in that case, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of every new video I create. So let's open up the iPad and I'll show you how to work with colors in Procreate. Okay, let's jump into Procreate and I'll show you all the tricks. So here's a blank document. Let's say I'm drawing something, let's draw a sun and I want to fill it with color. So all I do is I can pick this up and drag it into a closed shape. You see this circle is a closed shape, just like that. Let's just complete the sun. And now let's say I want to make the center of the sun a little bit more orange. So then I would go to my palette and I can just pick a different color, let's say a bit more orange, and I can just pick it up and drag it right into another color and it will recolor it. But now let's say you want to recolor the sunbeams as well. I'll double tap to undo. And then you have another option for changing color by going to the adjustments menu and then hue saturation brightness at the layer level. Here you can uh, change the saturation which is how colorful your, how intense your color is and you can change the hue which is how orange or pink or green or blue or whatever your sun actually is then you're you're changing the colors on the entire layer and then I tap the menu again to accept now if you are coloring a complicated drawing let's just take hide this one and i have a line drawing already prepared i'll make a new layer underneath it so that i'm not coloring on the same layer as my outline you can see i'm coloring on its own layer and if I was coloring something like this, what I would do is like, look, I cannot just drag the color in. It floods the entire canvas because the shape is not closed. So I would outline the shape first that I want to fill it. And then I would drag, the, drag and drop the color in. Now, of course you could do it this way. It just takes longer. Now I can switch the color, let's say this nice blue and I can do another section. But I have a pro tip for you here, put each individual color on its own layer so that you can later use the adjustments menu to recolor your drawing. For example, later you might decide that you don't want this to be blue and because these two pieces are on the same layer you will not be able to just go and do the same adjustment as i showed you in the beginning so had we put this blue on its own layer i'm going to select it and pop it on its own layer you see it's on its own layer now i can easily make this blue into another color you see i can make it purple i can make it pink and you can experiment with your color options here. I kind of like purple. This is nice. Now let me give you a quick tour of the color options in Procreate. So you can select colors in three different ways here. All of the ways of selecting colors are working with the same exact concept. Now in color you have three variables that you're always controlling. It's the hue, which is which you know, which actual color it is. It's the saturation, which is how intense the color is, and value, how light or dark the color is. So this lever works on the hue. This one, if you go down, it goes black, so that's your value really dark or really light. That's light. And here, if you go to the right, it goes more saturated. If you go to the left, it goes less saturated. 
So that's a real way. Now, the classic way, which is what you would see in Photoshop and your uh, usual graphic design programs is like this. It's exactly the same. So lighter or darker, that's your value. More colorful or less colorful, that's your saturation. And then here, this lever, you can actually change the type of color it is, which is your hue. And then you can also adjust the levers if you want for the other two variables. And then finally, you have this other option if you are working, if you know, if you have a code, for example, a hexadecimal code that you got from the internet or you use for your brand and you want to type it in directly, you can do that here or you can uh, put it here. I hardly ever use this option, but I can see how for graphic design, it would be really, really useful. Now, my personal favorite is this way. This is the way that I usually work. But if you are more of a circle person, you can work here. Now, there's still two more options. So the Palais option is where you can save the color combinations that you like. So for example, let's say here, I like this yellow, so I can just drop it in here. And then I like this uh, purple. I can just drop it in here too. And then if let's say I wanna move it down, I can do that. Or if I wanna delete it, I press and hold and I can delete the color. And then of course you can save your sets in buckets. And then there is one more option, which is called the Harmony, which is a really, really cool option that was added to the latest version of Procreate. So here's what this is. You have probably heard of complementary colors or using um, split complementary analogous. There's different sets of colors that you can use in your drawing. So for example, complementary are colors that are completely opposite to each other. So you might not know that the opposite of blue is orange and opposite colors give you the highest contrast. So for example, if this is orange and I wanted a totally opposite, as opposite as I can go for this color, I could actually just put the orange here and right here I have my blue and I could just use that for my drawing. I could also save these out, save these combinations in a palace like I showed you before. And now if I wanna use the analogous, which are colors next to each other, if you wanna have like a harmony. So for example here, I have like this teal color and then I have a blue one and a green one. Or if I'm going purplish, I have this really purple one a pink and a blue. So these colors will always harmonize and work well together. And now we can adjust those other values I was telling you. You see, I'm going lighter, which is making these pastel colors. Now, how do you actually use this? So the way you use it is that once you found a combination you like, let's say I wanna save this, I tap on this and it puts it into your active color and then you can put it in your palette. And then you can go back to the harmony and let you tap this guy and it put it in your bucket and you go back to the palette and you save it. And you save the last one as well. And so there's my three colors right there available. Very cool option. Now, let me show you how to structure the layers so that it gives you the most flexibility in your drawing to experiment, create different colorways and uh, find the best color combination that works for your drawing. So for example, here is a slightly rendered drawing that I did of Ariel. And uh, you can see that the hair has the base color. Here is the base color. And then it's got some shadows on it. Right here, a deeper red. And then it's got a highlight layer. And then finally, on its own layer, it's got some really bright spots. Well, right now I want to show you how to do something like this by adding shadows and highlights to your base color. So as mentioned in the beginning of this video, you put each color on its own layer. So here you see there's a few pieces of the drawing that are this teal color and they're all sitting on this one layer. If I wanted to make her suit a different color, I could just use this menu and change it. Now let's go back to the hair. So I've got my base color. And then I 
I've got another one like this. So what I did, the way that I personally like to do the shadows and the highlights is that I would sample the base color and then I would go to the my favorite way, which is the classic way. And I would make it a little bit more saturated because colors go more saturated in the shadow and a little bit darker red. And you can see when I tap and hold, it's showing me the original color and the one I'm selecting. So for a shadow, you want to just go a little bit darker. And then I would do the drawing on this layer, you know. So for the highlights, the same thing. I would sample the color and go a little bit lighter a little bit less saturated to pick the color but there is another way to do this if you like you can play with the blending modes so i have created this example what i did is i recreated the shadows using just this gray color and you're saying oh no but this looks doesn't look good at all well hold on so what we're going to do is we're going to play with the blending modes. This is a bit too strong. So we're going to drop the opacity to, I'm going to go 28%. And it still looks kind of grayish, doesn't look that good. So here is where we are playing with the blending modes, which is how the different layers interact. Now this is already starting to look better. Maybe if I drop the opacity more, it would almost work. I still find this to be a little bit too ashy and grayish. It's lost its luster. So I'll try a different mode and I will keep clicking it until I see something that I like. This one could work, but it looks a little bit too hot for a shadow. So keep going. I think this would be the best option for this case and then for making it lighter you can do the same thing but with white and there you will go and look at options like lighten and screen and color dodge and add so you you literally cannot predict how it's gonna be you just try different ones and see which ones you like that's another way to do the shadows but my preferred way is to just sample the color and use this option to pick a color that I like for the shadow. So which of these ways of working with color in Procreate was new for you today? Let me know in the comments below. This way I know what's helpful for you and I can create more videos that are special for you. If you want to see a full article detailing what you just saw in this video, head on over to my website tatianadenis.com. The exact link is in the description below. And while you're there, grab your free kawaii drawing mini course with seven free drawing tutorials, you can practice your coloring skills in Procreate with those cute and adorable drawings. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and hit subscribe and I will see you again in the next video.